LeBron James has agreed to a not one but two-year, two-year contract extension. It's really a one-year deal with the player option. One hundred and one point three five million dead presidents. Uh, now James was eligible to make an extra almost three million dollars more than that. But the savings allow the very frugal genie bus uh, to not have the money that other real owners have. So it allows the Lakers to get below the second apron. I always try to stay below the second apron. Now, if you're a salary cap nerd, you're feeling a little tingly, right? A little tingly. Oh, second apron. Oh, I like that. The second apron. It's the way to go. Now, LeBron says he took less money because when you're in a relationship, he said, there are – Things that you have to do sometimes, and he wanted to make sure they had more flexibility to alter the roster, you know, because all these players don't want to play for the Lakers. But LeBron wanted to make sure that Jeannie Buss and the Lakers had plenty of plenty of extra money to play with. So let us discuss the question. Does LeBron, uh, does LeBron deserve a ribbon for taking less money? Should we give him a nice little ribbon? Hey, look, LeBron, you took less money. I'll give you a little ribbon. So I've got the Yale Playbook, CNN, and Nonprofit. And we will combine all of these things together, and uh, we are going to make a fire in the hole. There's a fire in the hole. All right, so first of all, uh, LeBron James, forget flowers, forget a ribbon. They should have a ticker tape parade for LeBron, just for LeBron. They can put him on a throne. They can... Drive him around. Why not? He does the discount double check there. What a charitable man, LeBron James, um, modern-day Mother Teresa. Modern-day Mother Teresa. Uh, unless, unless this is actually a move out of the Yale playbook, the famous Skull and Bones at Yale, and this would be what's known as skullduggery. It is classic skullduggery, old-fashioned old-fashioned skullduggery, misdirection play, the head fake, right? That's what it is. The Lakers, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but the, the Lakers are paying LeBron like he's from that old show back in the day on HBO, The Sopranos, because they're crumpling up the money in envelopes, and so they're not paying LeBron the full amount, but instead they're giving that money to his podcast buddy who's now the coach. <laughs> Uh, they also have the Make-A-Wish uh, Nepo baby, who's now on the team. And so those are all moves to pacify LeBron James. So when you think about the money that the Nepo kid's making, then that money right there, that that's like family money. So eventually LeBron will die, and then his money will get dispersed to the kids, right? That's usually how it works. It's the normal circle of life stuff. And so it's a little less money that will come out of the – LeBron fund, and that will go to the to Bronny. And so getting a multi-million dollar gig for a guy that can't play basketball at a high level, it's pretty good. So, yeah, what a what an honor. LeBron taking less money. Just make sure you hire his podcast buddy and, and draft his kid who's not very good. All right, now, secondly, speaking of Linepo James, uh, speaking of that, so Bronny James, we, we mentioned this earlier in the show, but he lasted just one game in the uh, NBA summer uh, fugaziness. And he already needs to take time off. He's got to rest. He's got, he's got an injury. It's not easy being 19 years old. Your body falls apart. You know, once you get past the age of 18, it's all over for you. We all know it. So he made his debut on Saturday, and that led to over-the-top reporting. The reporting on this, insane to the membrane, uh, it was. So I don't know if you consumed any of it. I couldn't avoid it. I wasn't working on the radio. It was a podcast on Saturday, but I consumed some of it. So where are you at on the breathless coverage of Bronny James in his summer league debut? So I found it lampoon worthy. Lampoon worthy it was a farcical Situation, as Al Michaels would say, uh, reports told us that Lee Nepo baby, Lee Nepo James, 
had some butterflies. They said that butterflies for Lenepo James. He then went out there and proved that the butterflies wouldn't get to him as he scored four points on two of nine shooting, 22% from the floor, but really looked great shooting. It was the greatest 22% shooting performance we've ever seen in the summer league. Now, the reporting, the way I would describe it, CNN-like in the sense, back when people used to watch CNN, which was a long time ago, but they would cover the Royals, not the Kansas City Royals, because who would do that? But even Eddie doesn't cover the Kansas City Royals, but the British royal family. And you know that that reverence that they give to the British royal family when they report? And not just them, but a number of U.S. media. So I, I found the, the stats, and I, I do think the stats are rather meaningless in the summer league, and I, I get a kick out of it because years ago, before everything got broadcast on television, I used to hang out at the Summer League. In They had it in Southern California. It was in Long Beach, and they had it in Irvine. And I would go out there when I was young and you know just futz around out there. Nobody cared at all. Nobody paid attention. I don't even think they kept sc- they kept the box score. There was like you know a mom and pop operation back then. But now it's like everything's on television and all this stuff. And but the reporting of it. A little much, right? A little much, uh, but it's uh, hey, one one opportunity in this spot. Bronny sucked at a time you can suck. The summer league. All right, now final thought. We leap over to the NFL, the National Football League, and we saw over the weekend the odds adjusted for Coach of the Year. Believe it or not, Holy Eugene in Chicago and Yafimi and G Manch. Chicago Bears head coach Matt Eberflus, the betting favorite, the betting favorite to be coach of the year. Does that work for you? Does it work for you? Uh, so I'll go first here, and I'm I'm shaking my head. No, this reminds me of last year in Chicago when Justin Fields won MVP honors, but it was only the offseason. He did win the offseason MVP, and that was one of the great moments in Chicago Bears history. But now Matt Eberflus is winning the Coach of the Year honors in July. So congratulations on that. Good luck. Uh, So I am part of the nonprofit Skeptic Society on this one, an honorary member of the nonprofit Skeptic Society. Chicago, I know they've got new faces in new places, and so there's some excitement there. It's different, so congratulations on that. The number one pick, Caleb Williams, the crying quarterback, is under center now in Chicago, and he's certainly an upgrade as long as the Chicago Bears can make sure that his nails are painted the proper color and he's got the right lip gloss on. He'll look marvelous under center. He's a very talented quarterback, clearly an upgrade over Justin Fields, depending on all of that other stuff. And then you look at Rome Adunze, the wide receiver from Washington, who's now part of the Bears, good player in college, should be pretty good in the NFL. Keenan Allen, he'll be great for three or four games till he gets hurt. The inevitable Keenan Allen injuries start piling up by around week three or week four, so that'll happen. You toss in DeAndre Swift in the backfield, and there is palpable excitement in Chicago. However, I'm not going to be Benny Brightset on this because I look around and Everyone's got ideas, right? Everyone's got the ideas that it's going to work out great. There'll be no bumps in the road and all that. And a few of those ideas actually end up working out the way they're supposed to. The best laid plans of mice men and fantasy football. Uh, it's always one of those things. Don't tell me what you're going to do. Show me what you've done. And to quote a member of the Fox Sports Radio Alumni Association, at this point the Bears are like the Jim Mora rant. They haven't done diddly poo, haven't done diddly poo, and there's no reason to think that these moves, while they are certainly improved the Bears in terms of talent, that the Bears are going to be in position to slay the Lions and take down the Packers, which means, if my math is correct, the Chicago football team will be in a battle royale against the Vikings. So will the Vikings or Bears finish in last place in the division? Inquiring minds would like to know. 